You're listening to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Comics, television, movies, and more. If it impacts fan culture, we have something to say about it. And now, your hosts, Jordan, Cliff, and Seth. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's Kapow, the Pop Culture Podcast. We're glad to have you. My name is Jordan Lou. Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. We hope you all enjoyed that last episode, the top 10 movies. Could you imagine we would ever declare definitively our top 10 movies? movies crazy town we were brave any... enough to do it the only ones brave enough to do it did you guys have any regrets or like thoughts of oh i did i should have mentioned this one or are you st- I went, does the I list went... still sit well with you or are you having second thought i didn't have any that i thought i should have mentioned i just kind of i am you know that i should have picked this or that but that i was like no i, I like the way it ended up i'm happy with it yeah i think for the most part um I don't, I can't say I would have really done anything or there's anything that I felt had to be on there um, that wasn't. So, yeah. Well, I saw a bunch of people online this week on Letterbox and stuff going back and watching the original Roadhouse because that new one's coming out. Mm-hmm. And like, so a lot of people that have never seen it and they're just like, I saw some, you know, some pretty shitty comments about it. And it, I was like, I was like, well, there's nothing you can do about it now because in the annals of history, <laughs> it is in. <laughs> so eat it. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. There's, I feel like there's movies that you can just miss. You can get behind on, and if you don't, that a movie like was, that, yeah. you you hear your whole life how crazy it is, or you have a friend who loves it, and you sit down to watch it, and you watch it one time with our old cynical eyes like ah what's this crap like a movie like that you have to absorb you have to mm. watch over and over and like see little details like oh look at uh, the thing in the background that happened or you know there's yeah. movie, those kind of beloved movies have so such depth to them just watching something like that one time i don't think it ever quite uh, hit you on that same level totally agree i heard just as many people saying wow they wish they'd have been watching it their whole lives so nice. i'm only gonna listen to them <laughs> that's our right as americans mm. Mm. so we uh w- did some things went some places yeah we, we i mean yeah we haven't talked about any of this stuff we've been doing lists and and award shows and all kinds of crazy stuff in 2024 we haven't actually just sat and really talked about what we've been up to so winter's officially over it's time to it's going and doing stuff season <laughs> get out there <laughs> so we had the local uh classic plastics toy expo was the first one right that's cliff made it down to that yeah so this um as far as we know will be was the final show um, so yeah, I wanted to, uh, to definitely go. Um, I've went to last few of them, I think. And, um, yeah, there was, uh, definitely, um, one booth in particular I was excited about cause, because they weren't in the show, the local show last fall. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, yes, I, uh, went fairly early um maybe got there a half hour or so after the doors opened on on uh i believe it was on saturday it was a two-day show this is at our local parkersburg west virginia art center which is kind of a neat little venue they have uh usually have vendors on two two floors and uh, it's right downtown so um kind of a fun thing to get out and do and then uh I went got in the door um they were, uh, Tony had, I don't know what, the, I have one sitting out of reach at the moment, but uh, when as you walked in the door, he had a couple of figures there, kind of space-looking dudes, kind of He-Man-ish 
um, on card back uh, that they were giving out for free. So uh, I think there was a sign said you could take one. They, there was a there were two different ones. You could take one of each for everybody in the door until they ran out. So um, did grab one of those and uh, that that was pretty cool. You don't see that much at a show. Free stuff uh, right right in the door like that. And then um, yeah, just kind of walked around for a little bit. Um, there were a few familiar uh, tables set up. Um, downstairs, uh, some local people. So kind of browse around there. Columbus vintage toys was there. They're usually there. I see them at a lot of shows, um, in Columbus and Cincinnati and, uh, around, uh, our area. And then, um, yeah, kind of, kind of went upstairs and, uh, Checked out a quick couple tables. Um, I knew where the Stan Solo booth was going to be. These are Star Wars custom figures, and uh, that I have several of, and and um, kind of a neat place that uh, uh, Chris Smith owns and started this company up. Um, the U.S. He is in uh, England. Uh, he's a British guy and the distributors for his company for, uh, in the U S uh, just so happened to live in Parkersburg, West Virginia. So I have, uh, I, I, I have met and talked with them several times, chat online with, uh, with John Kelly, um, here and there. And when I'm looking for something, but, um, but yeah, they had their booth set up and, uh, had some of their newer releases there. Um, he had some previews of stuff that, uh, they're, they're actually just still, they were actually just still filling the pre-orders on. Um, but they do a, a vintage Kenner style, um, Star Wars figures. A lot, most of their, of their figures are characters and, and ones we didn't get with the original line. So they are done in that Kenner style. Um, five POA. Uh, right now, um, if you look on their website or their Etsy page, you will see the Luke, um, the Dagobah Luke's, um, version. So he's in his tank top, messy hair, um, and same like, you know, Bespin trousers type of thing. Uh, if you remember the old Bespin Luke, but, um, and also, uh, they have designed and produced a, a Darth Vader with removable helmet, Sebastian Shaw style, um, which is a really neat figure. Um, so I did get to, he was showing me those, a couple new droids, got to, you know, touch them and, and feel them. And the, it's amazing quality. The plastic feels just like Kenner. They look like Kenner. Um, if you did not know any better, you would just assume they are Kenner figures. So I have several in the back, uh, behind me here. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I had contacted him, uh, earlier. I was looking for a, uh, one particular, uh, figure, one of the last 17 reproduction custom figures, uh, the general Lando figure that I didn't have. And I'm not really willing to spend high dollar, uh, prices on those figures. So, um, for, for much less money, uh, the, than the vintage figure goes today. I picked several of those up. Um, and that was one of them. So very cool. Had a great time talking to him. Um, just talking star Wars figures, Stan solo. And, uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, there were people coming up as I was kind of talking to them and they were buying stuff and, and, uh, in fact, uh, there was one, one guy, uh, was walking by and he was, um, you know, uh, at least in his, I would say at least in his fifties, probably a little older, um, that was kind of walking by and, and he had some stuff in his hand and he was like, he was having a good time. Um, he had already made some purchase and he walked by and he's like, Hey man, he goes, because uh, Stan Solo, you can usually buy a, a loose fit version or a carded, on-card version. Um, and, and the card backs are, are wonderful quality, unpunched. Um, they ship them in, in great packaging so they don't get bent up or damaged. And um, uh, he John had several of them uh, kind of set out um, uh, amongst the, the loose figures. And he kind of looked at it and he walked over. He picked up one of those, uh, those Ula 
Twilight figures. I have one behind me in the loose. He picked it up on card, and he's looking at it, and he's like, what? What? And he goes, uh, is this for real? And, uh, <laughs> and they were, you know, trying to explain to him like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're custom figures. They're, they're not from 1984. Um, but they, but they do look like it. And he's like, man, this is awesome. And he starts showing us some of the stuff he had bought. He's like, yeah, he's like, I had so much stuff as a kid. And, uh, when I was younger, I sold it all off. And now I really wish I had all that back. So I started buying stuff again. He's like, Never had a, he held up his bag very proudly. Um, he had a boxed uh, Return of the Jedi ATST, the chicken walker, um, that he had just bought. And he's like, yeah, it took me 50 years to almost to get this thing. And he's like, but I got it. And I was like, and he's like, man, I, I don't have any Stan Solo. I never heard of that. And I was like, man, I was like, these are the figures that we all wished we had. They didn't make these ones. And, and he stood there and he's like, you know what? He goes, man, that thing's awesome. I'm just going to buy it. So he, he laid down the cash right there and man, he was happy as could be. And I was happy as could be that, you know, I kind of helped make a little sale there and, and bought some stuff <laughs> myself. So, um, that, that was, that was my main reason for going. That was, my, I was super happy to see those guys. And I talked to them for a long time. Um, my son met up with us. Cooper met, uh, met me up there. Here we got there a little after I did, we walked around and, uh, checked out all the vendors and uh some good vintage vintage stuff um some some modern stuff too um there was even like i said some some uh 3b 3 d printed little props i saw some joe stuff cobra um uh little lectors and, and thrones and stuff that were pretty cool i'd seen uh, uh i think last fall so stopped and looked at those for a while but it was really a good show um happy that it got to happen uh, classic plastics is, has moved out of the mall, um, out of our mall just recently, um, unfortunately. And, and, um, they've kind of set up a big storefront back at a, at a local flea market here. And, uh, so that's what Tony's doing, but it was a good show. Um, hope, I hope we get more someday. Um, that would be great. Uh, I, I like the two day shows. Um, don't feel pressured to, uh, that I have to get down there at any certain time. So, so yeah, pretty cool. Well, I, I know from experience, it's not an easy thing <laughs> to do and he's done it, you know, several years now. So yeah, you can keep supporting him at Rick's flea market, Marietta, or he has an eBay yeah. store for classic plastics. We've got the, uh, Rathicon in Athens, I think is the last remaining kind of local, local show here and that's one i've never been to um for whatever reason i just i think is it usually in the summer i don't know uh, i can't remember spring spring yeah yeah i i need to make it down to that one i i just haven't yet so something to look forward to so the very next weekend which happened to be daylight savings weekend <laughs> was the Lexington Comic and Toy Convention. So the night the clocks jumped forward, I lost an hour of sleep. Took the four-hour drive to Lexington. I'd never been there. I'd heard of it. I know some friends who have gone. I know it has a pretty good reputation. But I was checking out the guest list, and there were several names that I was impressed by. That it, so it was kind of on my radar. And then it had uh, Julie Brown. Not to be confused. Downtown? With, Julie? Not to be confused with downtown Julie Brown. Uh, voice actress on Batman the Animated Series, mm. which was this you know, this Batman poster that started this whole thing. This whole mess started with this Batman poster. And there's only a handful of actors on the poster that are still with us. And I thought, wow, there's somebody from the poster going to be at this show. That feels like a sign that I need to go. Uh, so again, it was, it was on my radar. I kept checking and then within the last couple of weeks, they added some really cool names. So I'm like, yep, um, I gotta go. Um, the negatives are that it was, it took so long to figure out who was even going to be there. Mm. They did that thing. They announced guests every Wednesday and Friday. We announced a new guest. And it's like, just tell me who's going to be there. Like, unless, like, unless they are very behind, like didn't have them confirmed and that's uh, that's other red flags but like yeah i want to know as far in advance 
you know, don't you don't tease me. I don't need to be teased. And of course, there were some cancellations last minute. There was some storm, like in Dallas, that stranded several mm-hmm. of their guests yeah. who never even made it. They were all stuck in in Texas. So you know, things like that happen. You're never going to know a hundred percent who's going to be there. But I would really like to know. And they they had very little information on pricing. Um. It was more helpful. Some I kept checking Facebook and like the, after the Saturday, like Saturday evening, Saturday, people were posting. Here's all the people's prices I, I was able to find. So like people were trying to help each other. What, what the yeah the convention wasn't telling you what the prices are and how to budget. So people were trying to look out for each other. But uh, that that's the biggest downside. The plus side, it was really easy to find. It was really easy to get there. Huge convention center. Really good signage. Like they had these huge signs, like the size of the door. Like if you got a badge, go in this door. If you need a badge, go in this door. They had signs pointing every which way for everything you needed. So super easy to navigate and get around. And they, again, they had a really good guest list and they broke everything up. The first floor, like the big ballroom, was all the celebrities, the TV and movie people. And then on the second floor, was like the con floor, all the artists and creators. Or no, the second floor was the panel rooms. They had the panel rooms and the cosplay and all that stuff. So the third floor ballroom was all the comic people. So it was really crowded. There were a lot of people there, but it was broken up pretty well, you know, spreading it across three different floors of stuff. So I went in. So this. <laughs> So yeah, if you want to, I had I did a visual aid on TikTok. If you go to our Kapow TikTok hmm. page, is that what you call it? Yeah, page? yeah, yes. Account. Okay. Sure. If you're uh, with yes. the TikToks, yeah. So <laughs> I went through and and showed some of the, the the people I met and some of the stuff I got signed. So that was a, a visual representation. But I talk about the the posters. I've gotten kind of obsessed with this. I, I, I started with that Batman the Animated Series and got I've got, I think, nine now autographs. And then I took a Batman poster when I met Jim Lee. And then I started taking it to every show, and now I've got like a dozen autographs on it. I, I'm like, that's so cool. I need a Spider-Man. I need a Superman. I need a Fantastic Four. Like, I, I've just sort of expanded it. And so that's kind of my thing. That's my new That's my new thing. <laughs> I'm a poster guy. <laughs> I'll be lugging my poster tube around every show I go to. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the Brady's. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a you're you're gonna have a whole uh, gallery of uh of posters here after a while. Okay. So yeah, very cool so, thing to display that way. Yeah, I've got a couple I've got most of them in, in frames now. Just need to find a place to put them. But so my thinking was, okay, I don't expect there to be long lines or anything. So like going to Galaxy Con with just a couple posters, trying to juggle these posters and some comics I wanted signed, and the ink is wet when you get it signed, and you gotta kind of be careful not to smudge anything. So like I thought, why don't I just get the posters out, hit every table I want with those, and then roll them up, put them away, and then go do everything else I want to do. Just like not try to do everything at once. So I'm, that was my plan going in. So I started with just the posters. But then several of the guests were like, there's no fee for a signature, but we, you know, whatever you want to donate. So I'm like, oh, I don't really want to do this twice. <laughs> I just want to make one donation. So that kind of threw my threw my plans away a little bit. But I, I was able, again, no, no real lines for anybody. Uh, first person I hit was Jim Shooter, which... I got everything I wanted signed the first time he was at Galaxy Con, not charging anything. And so now he's back with every con, he's charging 20 bucks a signature. But I'm like, I don't have him on these posters. So I justified it as, well, you know, I got these all these free autographs at the first show, so I can pay a little bit for this one. But I thought, I want to get my money's worth. I want to ask him something. So I got in line. I asked about the, uh, the no prizes. I said, all right. I said, I've always wondered. I said, how much did the editors hate the no prizes back in the day? So these were, if you wrote in, this was the gimmick. If you wrote in and found a mistake in a Marvel comic, but you explained it away that it wasn't a mistake. If you said, well, the this happened, but the reason it did. So if you could show that Marvel never made mistakes, you won a quote unquote no prize. 
And it's um, in the mail. Yes. So many of the comics I've read were eight-year-old kids writing in. The gloves were purple in the second panel, but in the fifth panel, they were blue. No price, please. And like the editors having to explain, here's what it, because the it's a it's a conceptual thing. <laughs> the kids mm-hmm. didn't quite get or grasp. So I always got the intent that I always got the intent that it was something they started and wish they had. So I, I wanted to ask him about it. And he gave me like the entire history of the no prize from Stan Lee in the letters column. He would just tell people, you win a no prize, Bunky, you know, good job. And then later, I think he said it was Lynn Ween who started actually mailing envelopes with nothing in them. It just on the outside, <laughs> you know, it's your it's your gold plated no prize has arrived. And he said people would write in. There was nothing in the envelope. Like people didn't even get that. They didn't get wow. the job. <laughs> and he said, well, oh. he's like, he said, he said it wasn't really the editors so much. Like all the assistants and the secretaries had to deal with all the mails. It's like the editors didn't mind it so much. But it's like, yeah, there was always there was always a little bit of confusion <laughs> with the whole thing. And he's like, sometimes we wish maybe we shouldn't have done it. That was it's kind of the only neat thing. Little... They, it's the only thing I think they did completely right. <laughs> so it's not a mistake. Uh, so yeah, the only the only celeb. I, so I went downstairs early. I thought, well, the lines are only going to get longer the later this goes with these celebrities downstairs. And I went down to maybe ten thirty, quarter to eleven, and like half of them weren't there yet. So the people were just kind of filtering in a little bit. So. Uh, I went down later. I wanted to meet C. Thomas Howell. Was the only soul other Man. Movie star. The Soul Man was there. So I got a picture with him. Star of Red Dawn. I told him, I was like, Red Dawn is like my favorite movie of all time. And he, he looked a little surprised. Like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I think you could have got it on the list. <laughs> if I brought C. Thomas Howell in to argue the fact. No, but even that, like the celebrity room was jam packed with people, but they had it roped off. You're like it was a one way street. You you walked in the door, you had to turn right, and you made a loop around. So like there wasn't a lot of milling and you know crowd problems. So that the lines were roped off really well. So that it was all really easy to get to. There weren't too many panels. Um, there there weren't any that many panels up to begin with, but there really weren't any I really wanted to watch. Um, at noon, there was a Bob McLeod Q&A who has worked for every book out there. I thought that he probably has some interesting stories. And so is that okay. every con? I don't think I've been to a con right. yet that Bob McLeod and Bob Hall are not at. They're at every one. I don't know how they do it. But I'd plan, I'm like, okay, if it hits noon and I'm tired, maybe I'll go, you know, that's a, you know, I'll go sit down for 45 minutes at this panel. So I kind of walked by and it was five or 10 after and he wasn't in there yet. So I'm like, uh, there's only like four people in the audience. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. And so at 1 p.m. there was a panel for Bluey, the cartoon. Oh, man, you know, that was full. Oh, two of the voice actors were there. And I thought, I don't know anything about Bluey, but I've seen I've seen those people on like talk shows and stuff. And they're entertaining. I was like, that might be fun to listen to. Just it's, thinking, it's, if I'm if I'm done with everything else, probably dog I man level fame. Uh, no, dog man would have been a pandemonium. <laughs> but uh, at, at noon, there were hundreds of people waiting in line for Bluey at one. It was a mm-hmm. bunch of parents pushing strollers, people with Bluey T-shirts. I'm like, oh, this is the main attraction today. <laughs> I'm not just gonna wander into this panel. Like, uh, forget this. So I I didn't end up going to any panels. Uh, hmm. yeah, got pretty much everything I wanted to do within a couple of hours. Um, said, uh, big names, Jay Lee, I really wanted to meet. Oh, uh, he did me a, a remark on my Avengers that I had Jeff John sign at Avengers 57, I think. It was like this Pretty. great cap remark. It was good. Um, the only remark I got was uh, Justin Mason, who's a Spider-Man artist, and he's done like all the Spider-Punk miniseries. Is kind of what put him on the map lately. He was really nice, and he he was he the it was a variant that just came out. It's called like the sound effect variant. He's done a whole line of them. So Spider-Man in front of like the big wording thwip. 
he's done a night crawler that says Bamp, and there's Wolverine coming out that says Snicked. So he's got a whole line of these covers that I, I think are really cool. So release the automatopoeia <laughs> issue. <laughs> uh, so I want yeah, the uh, Kapow cover. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, get to that good. one at some point. Uh, Jim Steranko, he wasn't there. It was like after maybe noon or so. I kept walking back to his table and he wasn't there first thing. But once he got there, I never saw him leave. Like he was there the whole <laughs> the whole rest of the time. Never said out. Thing. No. So he's pretty legendary. Uh, 1960s Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced all the graphic design elements, the pop art style, the psychedelic looks the things and like drew comics like nobody else ever did uh i think he's gone crazy in his old age he's a little bit nuts but that's part of his charm i think mm. he was like a vaudeville guy in the 50s he was a he was a magician and an escape artist he worked you know he was a musician he was in a band like he was just one of those dudes who was just like you know center of everything in new york in the 50s and 60s so he stood and talked to everybody the guys ahead of me had their comics out to get signed. And his handler was like, you got, you, you might as well go put, and put those back in the bag and board. Cause it's going to be a minute because <laughs> he talked to everybody. He flirted with the guy's wives. He was telling stories. Like he was just looked like he was having the time of his life still. So it was cool to meet him. Um, oh, the other legend, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, uh, which I was, really psyched to me i said this guy was 1982 i think dc put out this the dc style guide which if you wanted to license dc products you had to go by this guide they had to look this way with this you know this is the this is the shade of red superman's cape is and this is the you know here are some images you can use to put on your breakfast cereal or your lunch boxes or whatever and he did the art for all that stuff hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images you know he, he like the front back and side of every character and then some pinup pages and like they're still using that art today i i yeah, google i said google him google his name dc style guide you'll, you'll see the art and recognize it immediately so he was just a sweet guy uh it was really cool to meet him so yeah i i had a good time no no disappointments nothing negative had some had some time to shop, picked up some dollar issues, and was out of there well in time before the Drake concert was that. <laughs> there was a concert in the same venue that night Drake was playing. So I was like, I got to get out of here. So I uh, made it home in plenty got, of time. You got beef with Drake. <laughs> you need to get <laughs> get out of there before the sun goes down. Uh, get just, be both uh, there at the same time. Are you Drake? <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen me in the same place. <laughs> So yeah, if you want a full full rundown of all the folks I met, check out that TikTok video, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll display these posters at some point. I'll get a good I'll get a good uh, image of them, but we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, um, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready myself next weekend. Uh, another one. I'm going back to another toy show, uh, the Great Ohio Toy Show. It's uh, March. 30th the day before easter um the spring show is this is in xenia ohio so little little trip for me that's too same, that's where you went before right yeah same show um it's at the green county fairgrounds it uh i think it's six or i, I believe it's seven um fair buildings full over 700 tables of vintage toys so uh, really excited about that. Can't wait to go next. Uh, Going to head down next Friday so uh, we can be there Saturday morning to uh, to get started early. Oh, I forgot David Lloyd. That was the name. There were already some good guests there, but he was added kind of within the last few weeks that, that kind of cemented that I was definitely going. This is the guy who drew V for Vendetta. Hmm. And you know, British guy. I don't know how many cons he's going to get to. So I had this page that in 2001, Thanksgiving of 2001, literally right after 9-11 happened, there was 
the Mid Ohio Con in Columbus that I went to every year. So it was a very weird, time, a very weird time. And they had Dave Gibbons as a guest, the artist of Watchmen. And he was just doing doodles and sketches for everybody, not charging anything. And so I got this Rorschach sketch that he signed to me. And I, it's just, it's the, on like a, a, the middle of the program had like a blank page to get sketches in. That's the only thing that was on it I, that I've had for more than 20 years. I've just had it in a box. And literally within a couple of years ago, I just finally got it out and put it in a frame. And I love it, but it was literally one little sketch on half a half a page. And I'm like, what yeah, what would I ever get to compliment that, to go with that? And then I see David Lloyd's gonna be somewhere. So Alan Moore's two, you know, the two biggest graphic novels in history, Watchmen and View for Vendetta. I'm like, oh, if I could get him to draw a sketch on the other side of that, that'd be perfect. So I went there, uh, whatever he was going to charge me, I was going to pay it. I didn't care. If he wasn't doing sketches, I was going to show it to him and be like, please, <laughs> this is all I need. It's all I want. So I walk up and he's like, he was the first, right? Uh, I think, yeah, I think he was the second person I went to. And he, I was like, are, are you doing sketches? Like, yeah, yeah. 15 bucks. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I was like, oh, yes, please. So I throw that down. To, it's one of the cheapest things there. He did a, a sketch of V with a crayon. He put on a blunt crayon and did this beautiful sketch. So now I've got I've got two original pieces of art from two of my favorite artists of all time. So that I said that was kind of the that made it worth all the <laughs> all the anxiety, uh, the gas money, and, <laughs> and the parking and the Drake. And all that stuff. So. Dang it! At Cincinnati Expo, we couldn't get a side of green beans and a dive Mountain Dew for fifteen dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe then I was like, "Why didn't I bring a blank cover? I could have got a you know this or that." But yeah. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, good. I just I felt like you know what are, I've never seen him at a con anywhere, and it's like you know Dave Gibbons. It's been twenty years. I've never seen him back at a con. So this you know could be a once in a lifetime thing. So. That's how I looked at it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty cool sketch. Crayon, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. It's pretty neat. So stick with the art, kids. You two could make fifteen dollars someday with the crayon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, broken crayon, still color. <laughs> I, I mean, I got tickets to some cons. I already paid for my. Gen Con trip. I got my hotel paid for. Got my uh, tickets paid for. So that's all. Just got to go. And then that's in August. And then I've got uh, Heroes Con's going to be in June. Hmm. Baltimore Comic Con's in September. And I've already paid for my Jim Lee signature and my Lionel Francis U signatures. So I'm trying to pay them off, pay them now, get everything yeah. paid for. So when I go, I don't have to find money. Yeah. So I'll just got to say, hey, thank you, past me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had seen, uh, I think Cincinnati had advanced tickets out already, the Comic Expo. So yeah, they, I yeah, just Cincinnati has only announced two guests. Who are they? Pretty good. Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Turtles. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was the other one? Oh, uh, Matt Wagner. Yeah. He created Grindel and done a ton of Batman stuff. So. Yeah, he did. Uh, 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 yeah, like Monsters and m- m- something. Well, I forget right. what his name was. Monster, but yeah, that Monster early, Man. early, early, ver- you know, early Batman story. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then to hear Detroit announces Carla Gugino is going to be in the house. And I. I don't know if a five-hour drive to meet Carlo Gugino. I haven't ruled it out yet. But. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Might be a neat trip, Detroit. A five-hour drive. Uh. <laughs> couple of com- cool, couple of cool comic guests, but no, yeah, nobody I would drive that far. To yeah. yeah. You wouldn't yeah. get Jared Lowe to go. He almost died in Detroit. Yeah, he's got to stay out of Detroit. He's like Drake. He did. Yes. <laughs> No, that was Ray Parker Jr. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Oh, uh, shoot. Yeah, I don't I don't have much. I, I'm going to going to Disney World in July. That's it's going to take all my money. I'm not going to probably do a whole lot else this summer. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of stuff I want to do. But, hmm, I don't know. You got your yak face. You don't have to you don't have <laughs> yeah. to do much more else this year. <laughs> Who doesn't? Hmm. All right. Okay, that's a that's a thing. Yeah. Sure. Check out our uh check us out on Patreon. Dollar a month. Uh five dollar tier. Uh if you want a little bit more. And uh check us out on, on, on the TikTok, on our TikTok account. Yeah. It, uh, if you want us to like do more stuff like that, let us know. Yeah. We uh we we have the ability we just don't always have the motivation so uh, <laughs> motivate us a little bit I guess it won't take much <laughs> all right thanks for listening everybody we'll be back soon with more my name is George Lo Cliff Barnes I'm Seth bye forever Kapow the pop cultured podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. All original content is property of www.udownwithkpp.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a comment. Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, and wherever podcasts can be found. You can connect with us through social media on Facebook, YouTube, at The Kapow Podcast on Twitter, or email the show, Kapow, the Pop Culture Podcast at gmail.com. If you really want to go the extra mile, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash KPP for special content and access to Patreon-only benefits. We are grateful for anyone who chooses to contribute, but please know that most of our content will remain free. So please continue to like, comment, and share.